the spring of 2022, I got rid of 98% of what I owned, converted my Nissan Sentra into a super tiny mini micro home on wheels, took my work on the road with me, and I travel the West while living in my car. In some videos, I take you along with me as I adventure in these incredible lands. In other videos, I share all about living in a car, how-tos, nomadic tips, and the philosophy of this wonderful and simple life of freedom. 13 months after living on the road, I adopted my travel companion, Chloe, and together we play tug of war all over the country. If you enjoy this type of content, hit that subscribe button below. Are you looking to turn your car into a micro camper on wheels and completely forego hotel costs when you travel? Or are you looking to do what I did, turn your car into a teeny tiny home on wheels, get yourself a wonderful little travel companion, travel all over the country while working from the road? If so, this video will show you how to do the build, what the essential items are you need to take with you, and how to organize them all. About a month ago, I was out in the forest and a mouse got into my car. I think mice are so cute, but they're also so gross and they carry all kinds of diseases. So I removed everything from my car, did a complete sterilization, and figured as I was putting everything back in that this would be a great time to do another organization video. I got Chloe one week after I started filming this video, and so I changed up a few things since this video to accommodate Chloe. I'll show you how it all looks with Chloe as part of this household at the end of the video. Well, I'm sitting in my very empty car. I took out all pieces of the platform except for this one. I didn't want to have to disassemble and deconstruct that. It was able to peek under this board to ensure that the mouse wasn't under there. But I'm going to show you how I put the whole platform together and walk you through so much that I learned in a year because I got to tell you, this is by far the best build I've had. When I removed my seat, there is awkwardly shaped stuff right there. That's part of the car. It was important to make flat surfaces to work with everything. So all parts of my build are about creating flat surfaces to lay on, to work on, and then also maximizing the use of space. By the way, I'm so excited about this. A key part of organizing in general, no matter where you're at, is that everything should have a home. Well, one of my most used items, paper towels, did not have a home. And so I just had them floating around everywhere and there wasn't a specific set place for it. And they're not the most attractive looking things, but they're so needed. I looked on Amazon for paper towel covers and I just really did not like what I found. So I knew I needed to make something. So I got this big bungee cord that I wrapped around here several times. It's got these hooks. And then this is just a store-bought paper towel holder. See? So I hooked the top to this hook and then, so that it looks pretty, I also put these little clip-on flowers. They're from Michael's Arts and Crafts, and they just clip right on. So now, even my paper towels are pretty. Even my toilet paper is pretty. I'll show you that in a bit. I just added these shelves today. I figured since I was taking everything out, why not custom tweak little things? I'll show you what I end up putting on them. Flat surfaces are so important. For the first almost nine months of living in a car, I did not have enough flat surface space. This is the only flat surface I had before. Now I have this flat surface and I'll show you two other amazing flat surfaces that I have. This is also a nice flat surface. The primary items that you're gonna need to create a custom build for your vehicle is plywood, two by fours and one by twos. So this is the plywood, two by fours, one by twos. You're gonna need your plywood cut to custom sizes. So I'll tell you what I did. I went to Home Depot. I prefer a three quarter inch plywood because it's very strong. And with all the driving and shaking, especially on dirt roads, I wanted something that was very sturdy. Bought a gigantic piece of three quarter inch plywood and I had the store cut that giant plywood down to some general sizes that I knew I would need. For example, I knew this needed to be the width of the car, but I also knew I was gonna have to do some custom builds because of that stuff. So the store cut the general size that's needed, and then I went in with a jigsaw to cut 
around these custom needs. If you don't have a jigsaw or you don't have a family member who has a jigsaw, if you don't have a location like a friend's or family member's house where you can custom build, I recommend renting out a storage unit and renting the jigsaw. The other primary tool that you're gonna need is a drill, a hammer, and a staple gun. You're also gonna need nails, screws, oh, and eye goggles for safety, especially when using the jigsaw. That You're also gonna need a tape measure. Once the jigsaw cut out the item to its custom needs, as you can see right around here, I then upholstered the item. I got this rug from Walmart. It was a four by six. It was only $20 for a four by six. I got two of those. And almost all of the framing, so to speak, in the vehicle uses the same rug. Not all of it. I'll share that in a little bit. It's a good practice in distress tolerance with my OCD. Did I already mention these little shelves? I'm so excited about them. I just cut them out with leftover plywood that I had and custom made them. So here is the almost blank slate of a car before I started putting things together. A big thank you to my family for letting me dismantle this room temporarily to show you everything I take with me while living on the road. Obviously, I don't bring anything on the walls or any large items like that round table, the side table, the couch, or the coffee table. Everything else that is in this room is stuff that goes with me. And I organized it, I categorized it. So all of these are essentially the pieces I frame with. They are part of the custom build I have for my car. By the way, this looks so funny, but I just did it today and I'm so excited about this. Super functional. This little thing that holds my bags was sliding all over my car, driving me nuts. Right over here in this corner, all of this stuff is what goes in my cargo box. I'll break that down in more details later. Everything right here, including the fridge, and then right there is my kitchen items and food. I told you my toilet paper is pretty. I got a nice toilet paper holder. Those are storage items that go on the lower level of my platform. This is my closet right there. Over here, I have what I think of as almost garage items, a vacuum, my tripod, an umbrella, fly swatter, back scratcher. <laughs> These items all go basically in the side of the doors. I'll show you how that all works. And of course, all my bedding, a few books, electronic items over there. I have my Jackery charging up. This is my bed. And I know it looks dirty. It was dirty from the store. This is basically the cleanest I got, but you cover it up with sheets and whatnot, and it's okay. It's high density memory foam, five inches. It is so unbelievably comfortable. And it's funny to see it chopped up like this. That's how to get the custom build. Other stuff I have, this is all my power station stuff, plus my Jackery. This is my Predator gasoline fueled generator. This is Dr. Prepare, small little 178 watt hour power station. This power station here, sadly, I am working with the manufacturer to return it because it's not a good quality. This is my internet hotspot, 300 gigabytes per month through Verizon. With this thing, I pay about $70 a month for that service. The box itself was $300. I'll walk you through more thoroughly what's inside a lot of the boxes and whatnot and what I take with me on the road. But this is just the high level snapshot of essentially my life. If you're thinking about embarking on this lifestyle and you plan to downsize and get rid of most of your things, I still recommend getting a storage unit. And the reason for that is there is so much adjustment that takes place that you're gonna want to be able to switch things out, to have a place to put things that you may or may not use, and to have a place to grab things that you may wanna switch out as you learn what your needs are on the road. You don't necessarily need a large storage unit. I'm super blessed that my parents let me use a closet in their house and I stored some art that I didn't wanna part with, seasonal clothing, extra camping gear, and some tools. It takes off such a burden of stress for the items that you don't know if you're gonna need to replace or the sentimental items that you don't necessarily wanna get rid of in the great purge that you're gonna have as you downsize to living in a vehicle. 
So I am gonna start putting together the car with all of these pieces here. The first piece of the platform frame build that I'm gonna put back in the car is what goes at the base of where the passenger seat was. Now, if you're thinking of building this out for yourself, you are going to need to start with a flat surface. As you can see in the car right here, that's not flat. What you're gonna need to do is find out what is gonna create the lowest level platform to make everything flat. So this here is lower and needs a higher two by four to hold up the platform than it does here in the front. But in the passenger seat right here, funky little grooves, see that? So you have to build your platform to basically work around all of that. I cut these two by fours. I think this is about three inches. However, because the car kind of goes like this and it has this weird little hump, again, you can see it right there. This had to clear all of that. These are only cut down to about, I don't know, two inches or an inch and a half. I don't remember the measurements, but these measurements of the two by four are longer than those. Another thing you're going to notice that right in here, it's not like a flush 90 degrees all the way around. You can see it's sort of this unique shape, which is why you need a jigsaw. And it's one of the reasons that you need to take a lot of measurements as you do this. Also, you'll notice on this platform, I've got these two by fours cut to size. Now this is a bit easier because once this is flush, then all your other measurements are quite flush. So. These are what hold up the dual layer platform. I basically screwed those into the back. That piece of the platform was one of the more complicated parts to build. As you can see here, this is upholstered with the staple gun all around the bottom. So that's what the bottom of all the pieces of plywood look like. To do that, you wanna cut your rug about one to two inches wider than around where you are gonna make the staple. Fold it over tight and staple down. I've got tons of staples all along the edges. Take a look at it. See how that covers the floor? And now this is all flat, usable space, which makes for excellent organization. You will see that here, I did not have part of a platform and that's because I've had so many different builds. In your car, you could just basically get one piece of plywood to go all the way to the back if you wanted something similar. So I had to create a second part of the platform to do that. So this is the next piece to basically get that all flush. These are to hold the second part of the platform. It's a perfect fit. Another thing that I'd like to show you, because I don't use the passenger seat belt, I took just one of those giant paper clips and I put the seat belt right down there. So it's snug and tight and I could even put clips on this if I needed to. Now we get to put the second layer topping on it, which makes it look so fantastic. Okay, as I show you this very large piece of framing, You'll notice this cut right here, this diagonal cut around here. And this is because of that sort of awkward angle near the further front part of the passenger side seat. Woohoo! I've got to show you why this is so awesome. See how this piece here is flush with that other piece right there. So that allows for a very comfortable and functional space. I also have this double-decker storage. There is so much storage. I painted these because I just think that's pretty. And see how the paint matches that paint back there? You see how these little pieces of wood? They all have a very important functional purpose. For now, I'm gonna take these two with this guy. Yeah, yeah. Let's go here, here. I love this. I just literally put a screw right in side. Bada bing, bada boom. And now that 
piece fits right there. The next thing is we're gonna finish off the platform right here to get everything flush. So the pieces that I need to get the back trunk area flush are all of these little pieces of wood, which were essentially scraps. And I'm just so lucky that this height is essentially all that's needed for the rest of my plywood to sit on it in order to be flush. So I'll show you how all of this works. All these little pieces are about to go in. Now I'm gonna go get the other two topper pieces. This piece here is from my earliest build. Isn't that beautiful? Because this is a poster different than this, it kind of drives me a little crazy. I never ever see it because the bed is completely over it. It is a very good practice in flexibility with my OCD. You'll see this is a little awkward to carry, but let's go put it in the car. This is definitely awkward. There it is. This cord is for the fridge. It's the 12 volt. This plugs into the Jackery. This is the side that plugs into my fridge. And I just needed to basically get it at this point before I put other stuff because it goes around sort of the nooks and crannies of the car so that it reaches and can charge with the Jackery. There is a ton of space for much needed items right here. And then of course there's the fridge. The first nine months that I lived in my car, I had my twin size bed, which was super comfortable. But once winter hit, it was not practical. I could not easily crawl from the driver's seat into the back. Plus the bed took up so much space that pretty much all I could do in the car was sleep. I did sometimes sit on the bed and work, but the bed height was high and I was constantly almost hitting my head on the ceiling. I needed a safe, way to get from the driver's seat into the back. I also needed to be able to work with more function and not hit my head on the ceiling. So there were a number of reasons that I needed this build. In the first rebuild, when I had this super narrow bed, it almost worked out perfectly. In fact, I still even miss that the bed spanned across here. It's just that it was too narrow. Plus, it was kind of annoying to reach and get a lot of stuff from my closet in the trunk. You can see that I would like literally crawl back and grab stuff from the trunk. That was uncomfortable. I didn't like doing that. I also put extra flat surface space on top of the fridge, not only because that looks nice and it gives it a nice finished look and aesthetic is important to me, but simultaneously it's super functional. Like at night, I put stuff up on this surface and I put stuff up there. It's super functional. Let's go get the mattress. With so many pieces to the mattress, it's kind of funny, but you cannot feel the like cracks between the different pieces. It's amazing. And it's possible that you don't feel them because I use like three layers of sheets, but it feels like one flat solid bed. It does look dirty, especially that piece, but I'm telling you, it was like that when I bought it. All these pieces go together like a puzzle or like Tetris. Making a bed in the car is a surprising amount of work. It's a lot of awkward bending. One day I will upgrade and it'll be a lot easier. Until then, I'm grateful for this comfortable bed that goes with me in my little red chariot. So the bed is now made up. A couple of things to note. When I'm laying down, see how this piece comes out? and it's secured mostly over here. So I don't put anything heavy here, but I can put like toilet paper here or anything light right here. And I still have all this extra space. Plus sometimes my hip is between like I'm a side sleeper. So I lay in my hip is right under this. So there's clearance. My feet, knees and legs all go in the back trunk, which is a much better use of space than when I reached in and like dove in to get stuff. And my bed is so nice and wide. You know, it's not as wide as a twin, but it's not as narrow as a cot. 
So it is perfect. It's exactly what I need and it's custom made. Another thing you'll notice is it's sort of cut out, sort of funny here and I just tucked the blankets all around it. My pillow goes right here and so I don't need the extra width in this space, but I do need the extra width for my whole body in this section. So isn't this just beautiful? Another nice thing, this top blanket, they're throws from Ross that range from like $8.99 to like $12.99. And you can mix it up and have new decor, fresh decor, seasonal decor in your car by getting a very nice plush throw as your top sheet. It's a nice way to get some variety in your teeny tiny home on wheels. What should we bring in next? How about the closet? This is my closet. This is my gym bag and there's some clothes in there. I've got my workout clothes, some regular wear clothes that I put on after a shower. I have my toiletry bag in here, some towels and my dirty clothes bag. No wonder it's packed so full and this goes in the cargo box. But this always is what goes with me to the gym or if I go stay the night at a friend's house or a family member's house, I can just grab this and I have everything I need. That being said, I also have doubles of some things. So for example, I have a whole set of makeup that stays on the interior of the car. And I have a whole set of makeup that goes in the gym bag. Same thing with the toothbrush, toothpaste, face lotion, sunscreen for my face. I have double of all of those things so that I always have them accessible in my gym bag as well as from the interior of my car when I'm getting ready from the car. This was a cute little three-tiered plastic bin from Walmart. I took the bottom one down to make it custom fit in my car. It is packed so full. Let's get the Jackery next. Gotta make sure that the 12 volt isn't gonna get crushed with this heavy Jackery and the 12 volt can reach and plug in and start charging the fridge. But the fridge isn't in here yet. I am so careful with that Jackery because I once threw out my back moving it. We'll go ahead and put the fridge in next. I've been so happy with this fridge, you guys. It was only like $259 when I bought it. I don't know how much it runs now. It's a 19 quart fridge. You can see it's quite deep. It has this nice little shelf here, the motor's underneath it, and then this big space there. I have a Jackery 1500 Explorer and it will go about five days running the fridge without needing a recharge, but that'll take it all the way down to basically zero. So I'm constantly recharging my Jackery and it's been just a great fit for this fridge. This throw here, it's gonna serve both an aesthetic purpose, but a functional purpose as well. So not only is it an extra layer of insulation to keep the fridge even a little bit cooler, but when I turn the fridge on, there's a light right here and it can be kind of bright at night. So since my head is here, I don't want that bright light. So just covers it, but it also makes it look prettier because the fridge I don't think is the prettiest thing. When I open the fridge, I need to open it. I just go like this, bada bing, bada boom. Super easy. Here's what the Jackery topper looks like from the inside. I can still access all of the plugins, but this not only provides me with extra flat surface, but it also makes it look nice and match my aesthetic. By the way, flat surface, flat surface, all that flat surface, flat surface, flat surface, flat surface, flat surface. That is truly magic. All that flat surface is amazing. Here I'm showing you what goes in the trunk. I've got lots of water, I've got my window coverings, and folders of important papers to take with me. I've got even more water in my tea thermoses. I have my generator, which I did return. I don't actually use that, but I make use of all space that I can. You can see it's not crowded. It looks wonderful. And now I'm about to fill the layered platform storage. All of these items here fit in that layered platform. Here, I have extra toilet paper, toiletries, first aid kits, feminine hygiene products, and yes, depends. Pro tip for all my ladies out there, if you never wanna bleed on your sheets or mattress ever again, ditch the pads and tampons and grab an adult diaper. That's right, I said it. Given that my most frequently asked question is how I poop and pee, I am no longer shy about sharing these things on YouTube. 
This last box here is essentially my junk drawer. It's a bunch of miscellaneous things I take with me on the road. And then I have more boxes. I bring with me lots of food. I then have seasonal hats, swimsuits, mosquito net face coverings, good books for the road, more cleaning items, and more toiletries. I've got my giant towel that I drape over my back window to block heat on a really hot day. I've got my pot and pan. And then it's just a matter of putting everything in. I store the items I use less frequently toward the back and I store the items that I use more frequently in the front. In a car, it's important to make use of every nook and cranny of space. So right now I'm storing extra food in a little pocket of space that I have. Here, I'm continuing to put items in the back part of the storage platform. Now to fill this beautiful blue box. This amount of space is prime real estate in a car. I feel like I hit the jackpot with this creation. And in this space, I store a bunch of miscellaneous things. My tea, some extra food, makeup, lotions, cords, different wipey thingies for your hands. What a beautiful sight to behold. And this gorgeous blue box is super functional. I can access it from the back or I can walk around and access it from the side. Additionally, when I'm driving, I can just lift it up the other way and access it from my driver's seat. And I always make sure to have plenty of hot hands with me wherever I go. I store multiple bottles of vinegar in the door drink area. And on the other side, I store lots of sunscreen and miscellaneous items. And the driver's side door, I keep my wasp spray ready to use if needed, some floss, a couple of additional items that I might grab on a more consistent basis, sunglass holder, scissors, I use a lot of those, hand sanitizer, some pins, that one has my name on it. I take like three of those tire gauges with me, that plastic container is for my shoes at night. And here I'm showing how I make use of every bit of space. I'm always amazed at how many items I have. It seems never ending. It's hard to believe that adding just one little basket and shelf can make such a difference in ease of life. And a special thank you to my parents for this pest reject item. The ability to sit like this with my legs down instead of just cross-legged on the bed was a huge, huge upgrade. When I had the twin mattress in here, I couldn't do that. There was nowhere for my legs to go. But this is nice because I'll put my laptop here or I'll put my iPad and then have my little keyboard for the iPad here. And this is where I do so much of my writing. I still have all this wonderful space to where I can easily access the driver's seat to get to the front and back. I really wanted that for safety in the event that I needed to jump from the back into the front on a whim. I also wanted it for stealth ability. I wanted to be able to just pull in, not open a door, not crawl into the back from the outside, but to be able to very easily crawl from the driver's seat into the back and be super stealth. And that way I can go to places that typically would have two, three, four hundred dollar hotel room rates for like a tiny standard room. This is so much better. I see why people call their vehicle Hotel Prius, Hotel Civic. This is my Hotel Sentra. That's right. It's my micro camper, mini home on wheels. See how right now you can see into the back and it just, you know, that's not the most attractive look. So this is what I do. <sighs> All right. 
Yes, I have a grand total of six pillows that go with me. I've always been a minimalist, except in the realm of decorative pillows. However, they're all functional. These serve as a laptop tray so that I'm ergonomically at a great angle whenever I'm typing my articles. They're beautiful. And close this off so that you're not looking right into the trunk. Check that out. Here is a final walkthrough of when my car interior is all put together. Final part of the video is everything that goes in my cargo box. In the cargo box, I have tents, a tarp, some bags, a chair, a toilet, and some trays. I have my butane gas, a pop-up bowl, and some other camping odds and ends. Well, I've completed the job. It's mice free, incredibly sterilized and super organized and everything's fresh and clean. And I'm really tired. That's a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work. Chloe and I are currently at a rest stop at the Boonville Flats out in Utah. It's amazing. It's also cool enough to actually set up, stay in the shade and work a bit from the road. So I'm gonna show you, this is her setup. Very important to get a bed that's machine washable. I wash it once or twice a week because it gets dirty. I also threw just a nice cozy blanket over this. Chloe loves to sprawl out. I've experimented to see if she prefers the bed or the flat surface. She prefers the bed. So this is a doggy cooling mat in case it gets a little too hot. Besides that, everything else kind of looks the same. This is live for travel, not just being nicely set up, but you can see it's pretty darn organized. For now, I have my fridge in the trunk as well as a six gallon water container plus three additional gallons of water. By the way, Chloe and I are on an epic trip far beyond the Southwest. So definitely subscribe below to follow our adventures and for more tips about living and traveling in your vehicle with a cute little companion. A brief announcement. I've decided to change my channel's name. So I am no longer going to be Sacred Southwest. I am now Autumn and Chloe. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. To follow our adventures, as well as to get more car life tips, tricks, and nomadic philosophy, like, comment, turn on that notification bell, and subscribe.